In the heart of the African village of Nobi, there lived a young woman named Dara. At 25, Dara was renowned throughout the village for her stunning beauty, which contrasted sharply with her humble circumstances. Dara's family was poor, struggling to make ends meet, a plight that only worsened after the tragic death of her father, Kamanu. A fisherman by trade, Kamanu had worked tirelessly to provide for his family, despite the many challenges they faced. Dara's mother, Ngozi, now gravely ill, was left to care for Dara and her three younger sisters, Nkiru, Chinelo, and Ifunanya, and their youngest sibling, a boy named Chima. Dara's father had gone out to sea despite a fierce storm, desperate to bring back enough fish to feed his family. The tempest proved too much, and Kamanu's boat capsized. His death pushed the family into deeper poverty, and without his income, they struggled even more to survive. The children often went hungry, and their peers mocked them for their ragged clothes and lack of basic necessities. One fateful day, Dara's uncle, Ezi, visited their home with a guest, a wealthy man named Chief Desmond. At 45 years old, Chief Desmond was one of the richest men in Ennobi, known for his vast lands and numerous businesses. Despite his wealth, he had never married. Chief Desmond had heard of Dara's beauty and had come to make an offer. Easy, lured by the promise of wealth, eagerly introduced Dara to Chief Desmond. He presented the proposal. Chief Desmond wished to marry Dara and in return would take care of her family, ensuring that Ngozi received the best medical care. Dara was horrified by the proposition. The idea of marrying a man so much older than herself, someone she did not love, filled her with dread. Dara initially refused the proposal outright, stating that she wanted to marry for love, not out of necessity. However, AZ was relentless. He painted a grim picture of their future without Chief Desmond's assistance. He emphasized the dire need for medical treatment for her mother and a better life for her siblings. Chief Desmond, too, played his part convincingly, promising to be a good husband and provider. The thought of alleviating her family's suffering weighed heavily on Dara's heart. After much persuasion and internal conflict, Dara reluctantly agreed to marry Chief Desmond, sacrificing her happiness for her family's well-being. The wedding was a grand affair, a stark contrast to Dara's humble life. The entire village turned out to witness the union, a mix of celebration and curiosity filling the air. Dara, dressed in a beautiful traditional attire adorned with beads and intricate patterns, looked like a princess, but her heart was heavy. Chief Desmond, on the other hand, was jubilant. He had finally secured the most beautiful woman in Nobi as his bride. The ceremony was filled with traditional dances, music and feasting. Dara's family received gifts and money, a temporary relief from their struggles. After the festivities, Dara moved into Chief Desmond's grand house. It was a stark contrast to her family's small dilapidated hut. However, the luxury did little to ease her discomfort. On their first night together, Chief Desmond's true nature began to surface. He was controlling and possessive, demanding obedience and respect. Dara tried to fulfill her duties as a wife, but her heart was not in it. Chief Desmond's behavior grew more disturbing. He would leave early in the morning for his businesses and return late at night, often reeking of alcohol and other women. Dara's loneliness and isolation grew, but she kept silent, hoping to fulfill her promise of taking care of her family. One morning, as Chief Desmond prepared to leave for work, he handed Dara an unusual garment, a metal pant. 
he told her to wear it and locked it with a big padlock, taking the key with him. Dara was shocked and horrified. When she asked what she should do if she needed to use the bathroom, he coldly replied that she would have to manage until he returned, or she can pee while wearing it and then clean it up later. She was indeed shocked. The metal pant was heavy and uncomfortable, causing Dara immense distress. She tried to understand why Chief Desmond would do such a thing, but his motives remained unclear. The once glamorous life she had imagined was turning into a nightmare. Days turned into weeks, and Dara's isolation became worse, especially after making her wear the metal pant. He wouldn't spend time with her, but it is obvious he is going out to spend time with other women. Chief Desmond's controlling behavior escalated. He forbade her from visiting her family and cut off all communication. Dara's health began to deteriorate from wearing the metal pant, and she felt trapped in a gilded cage. Her only solace was the brief moments she could sneak away to visit her family, but even those visits became less frequent as Chief Desmond's vigilance increased. Dara's mother, Ngozi, continued to struggle with her illness, and her siblings missed her dearly. Chief Desmond had a secret room in his house that he forbade Dara from entering. Curiosity gnawed at her, but fear of his wrath kept her away. One day, while he was away on a business trip, Dara seized the opportunity to explore the forbidden room. What she discovered was beyond her worst nightmares. The room was filled with strange artifacts, symbols, and items that hinted at dark rituals. Dara realized that Chief Desmond was not just a controlling husband, but a man involved in sinister practices. Dara's suspicion grew as she pieced together the clues. She began to understand the true purpose of the metal pant. It was part of a ritual to drain her life force and bring Chief Desmond wealth and power. The realization filled her with dread, but she felt powerless to escape his grasp. She decided to confront Chief Desmond, hoping to find a way to end the torment. When he returned, she mustered the courage to ask him about the secret room and the metal pant. His reaction was explosive, confirming her worst fears. He threatened her with dire consequences if she ever dared to speak of it again. Desperate to escape the horrors of her marriage, Dara began to devise a plan. She knew she couldn't do it alone and needed help. She reached out to a trusted friend, Oluchi, who had always been there for her. Together, they plotted a way to free Dara from Chief Desmond's clutches. Oluchi suggested seeking help from a powerful herbalist known for breaking curses and rituals. Dara knew it was a risky move, but she had no other choice. They decided to meet the herbalist in secret and seek his guidance. Under the cover of night, Dara and Oluchi ventured to the outskirts of the village to meet the herbalist, Baba Ayo. The old man listened to Dara's plight and examined the metal pant. He confirmed that it was indeed a powerful ritual tool designed to drain her energy and feed her husband with more wealth. Baba Ayo promised to help but warned that breaking the ritual would be dangerous. He gave Dara a special concoction to weaken the pan's power and instructed her to use it while Chief Desmond was away. He also provided her with protective charms to keep her safe. With renewed hope, Dara waited for the right moment to implement the herbalist's plan. When Chief Desmond left for another business trip, she drank the concoction and applied it to the metal pant. To her relief, it began to weaken and she managed to remove it. Dara knew she had to act quickly. She gathered her belongings 
and sent a note for her family, explaining her situation and asking for their understanding. She and Oluchi made their way to a safe house arranged by Baba Ayo, where they could hide until they figured out their next move. Chief Desmond returned home to find Dara missing. Enraged, he searched the house and found nothing but the metal pant lying on the floor. His anger turned into a cold, calculating fury. He knew he had to find her before she exposed his dark secrets. Desmond was a man who had sold his soul to evil for the sake of money. Years ago, desperate for wealth and power, he had approached an occultic master who promised him untold riches. The price was high, his soul and a dark ritual also involving his wife. If he ever got married and wanted more money, the ritual demanded that Dara must wear the metal pant at all times and she must not go seven days without it. If she did, Desmond's wealth would start to decrease and he would eventually die after the seventh day. This was the reason for his frantic and cruel behavior towards Dara. She was the source of his continued wealth and survival. Desmond contacted his occultic master in a panic, explaining the situation. The master emphasized the urgency, warning that every minute without Dara wearing the pant brought Desmond closer to ruin and death. Driven by desperation, Desmond launched an intense search for Dara, employing all his resources and connections. Back at the safe house, Baba Ayo kept Dara and Oluchi updated on Desmond's frantic search. He will stop at nothing, Baba Ayo warned. You must remain hidden for the next seven days. If he finds you and makes you wear the pant again, all will be lost. Dara's heart pounded with fear and determination. She knew she had to stay strong for her family's sake. Every day felt like an eternity, but she clung to Baba Ayo's words and the protective charms he had given her. In the village, the tension was palpable. Chief Desmond's men scoured every corner, interrogating villagers and searching homes. Dara's family confused and worried, was kept under constant watch. Desmond himself was seen less frequently in public, his appearance becoming increasingly haggard and desperate. By the fifth day, Desmond's desperation reached new heights. His wealth had begun to diminish, and he felt an ominous sense of doom creeping upon him. On seventh day, he decided to visit Dara's family, hoping to persuade them to help him find her. Desmond arrived at their home, flanked by a few loyal men. His once confident demeanor was replaced by a desperate, pleading tone. Please, he begged Dara's family, you must help me find Dara. If she doesn't come back, I will die. Ezi, Dara's uncle, and the village elders were present. They demanded an explanation for Desmond's erratic behavior and the true nature of his wealth. Cornered and with no other option, Desmond confessed everything. He revealed the dark pact he had made and the importance of the metal pant. His eyes filled with tears as he recounted how his life depended on Dara wearing it. The villagers were horrified. Desmond's confession confirmed their worst fears about his sinister nature. Just as Desmond finished his confession, he began to bleed from his eyes and nose. He fell to the ground, coughing up blood. The crowd watched in shock as he cried in agony. Within moments, he lay still, lifeless. Word of Desmond's death spread quickly. Dara, still in hiding, received the news from a trusted villager who had come to inform her. She felt a mix of relief and sorrow. Despite everything, she had never wished for anyone's death, even Desmond's. She decided it was time to return to the village. As Dara made her way back, she was filled with apprehension. 
She didn't know what to expect, but she knew she needed to see her family. The village elders, upon seeing Dara, gathered to hear her side of the story. Dara recounted her harrowing experience, the secret room, the metal pant, and the help she received from Baba Ayo. The village elders declared that Dara was a victim of Desmond's dark ambitions. They praised her bravery and resilience. The villagers rallied around Dara and her family, offering support and ensuring they would no longer suffer in poverty. Dara's return brought a sense of healing to her family. Ngozi received the medical care she desperately needed, and Dara's siblings found solace in their sister's return. The community, united by the ordeal, grew stronger and more vigilant against any future threats. With Chief Desmond gone, Dara focused on rebuilding her life and helping her family. She became a vocal advocate for women's rights and protection in the village, using her experience to educate others. Her story inspired many to stand up against injustice and to protect those who could not protect themselves. Dara's relationship with Oluchi deepened and they worked together on various community projects. The bond they shared, forged through adversity, became a source of strength for both women. In time, Dara's heart began to heal. She met a kind and gentle man named Ekene, who admired her strength and resilience. Ekene was a humble farmer, dedicated to his work and deeply respectful of Dara's past. Their friendship blossomed into love and they supported each other in their endeavors. Ekene's love brought a sense of peace and joy to Dara's life. Together, they dreamed of a future filled with happiness and hope. Dara's family welcomed with open arms, grateful for the positive influence he brought into their lives. Dara's journey from a beautiful young woman trapped in a nightmare to a courageous advocate for justice became a legend in Nobi. Her legacy lived on, a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of standing up for what is right. The village of Nobi thrived under Dara's leadership and influence. Her story was passed down through generations, inspiring countless others to fight against oppression and to seek a better future. And so, Dara's legacy lived on, a shining example of how even in the darkest of times, hope and courage can light the way to a brighter future.